Today we're going to look at a pretty cool problem from the 2004 Austrian-Polish Math Olympiad. So there are a lot of moving parts here, but that being said, I think there are also a lot of nice techniques. And while it's kind of surprising at first glance that this problem is even possible, although we'll see that it's fairly straightforward. Okay, so let's define s of n to be the sum of the digits of the natural number n. I guess we should say here uh, expressed in base 10. And then we'll set capital N equal to the sum as k goes from 10 to the 2003 all the way to 10 to the 2004 minus 1 of s of k. And then our goal is to determine s of capital N. So we've got like really a composition of this function s with, well, maybe the sum of values of s. So I think that's pretty interesting. Now let's start off by observing that n is really of this form. Notice it's equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to this upper point, so 2004 minus 1 of s of k, minus the sum as k goes from 0 up to 10 to the 2003 minus 1 of s of k. So of course, expressing it as this difference really just changes the starting point to this k equals to 10 to the 2003. But it'll be a little bit easier to work with this. Okay, so now let's observe that this motivates us to look at the following sequence of numbers, and I'll call them a sub n. So there'll be a sub n, which is equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to 10 to the n minus 1 of s of k. And if we can get a handle on what this sequence a sub n looks like, well then, well, we're essentially all set. So let's maybe explore the first couple of values of this sequence to see if we can come up with some sort of reasonable expectation for a closed form. And then perhaps we could prove that closed form using induction. Okay. So let's observe that a sub 1, well that's going to be the sum as k goes from 0 up to, well 10 to the 1 minus 1, which is 9, of s of k. But notice that this is just the digit sum of some one-digit numbers, but the digit sum of one-digit numbers are simply those one-digit numbers. So here we're going to get that this is equal to 0 plus 1 plus 2 ending at 9. But that's really the ninth triangular number, and there's a closed form for triangular numbers, so this is going to be 9 times 9 plus 1 over 2. In other words, 9 times 5, aka 45. So we've got a sub 1 is equal to 45. Now let's look at a sub 2. So that's going to be the sum as k goes from 0 to 99 of s of k. Now this may seem like uh, pretty hard to work with, but if we break it into chunks of 10, it won't be so bad. So I'll just write out those chunks of 10. So we'll have s of 0 plus s of 1 all the way up to s of 9. So those are the one digit parts. And then we'll have s of 10 plus s of 11 all the way up to s of 19. So those will be the parts obviously between 10 and 19. And then let's see, the last bit will be s of 91, or sorry, 90, plus s of 91 ending at s of 99. Okay, great. But now we can calculate each of these pretty easily. Observe that, well, this first line is simply equal to 45. And then this second line, well, we're going to get 45 from everything in the ones digit. And then, well, observe that we also have a one for everything in the tens digit, but we have exactly 10 ones. So that's going to give us, well, 45 for the sum of the ones digits, and then 10 
times one, in other words, 10 for the sum of the tens digits. So that's gonna be, we have plus 45 plus 10. And then for the next bit, well, we're gonna have another 45 for the sum of the ones digits. And then we'll have, well, 10 times two for the sum of the ones digits, because the next line is gonna be all of the twenties. So then we'll have, this is plus 45 plus 20. And then this is all the way up to 45 plus 90 is this last line. But let's see, how many of these 45s do we have? Well, we have 10 lines here, so that's gonna add up to 450. And then after that, we have 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40, all the way up to plus 90, but that's just gonna be 10 times the triangular number that we saw right here. In other words, 450 again. Well, that's gonna add up to 900. Okay, so we've got 45 for a sub one, we have 900 for a sub two, and then for a sub three, well, we can play this whole game again, but now we'll break it into chunks of hundreds. So we've got this sum as k goes from zero to 999 of s of k, and well, we'll have s sub zero plus all the way up to s of 99. And then this is gonna go all the way down to s of 900, all the way up to s of 999. And then, well, we know that this first line is equal to 900 just as before. The second line is gonna be well, 100 plus 900, and so on and so forth, just like we did up here. So in the end, and maybe I'll let you do all of the arithmetic, what you'll see here is we get the number 13500. Zero, zero. But of course, we'd like to have some sort of nice formula that ties this into the index that we see. So looking at this a little bit more carefully, observe that this is equal to one times 45 times 10 to the one minus one. So here I've got one for my index a sub one and then 10 to the one minus one, again for my index a sub one. Whereas this thing right here is gonna be two times 45 times 10 to the two minus one. So again, we work that two in there. And then, well, you can check that this number is equal to three times 45 times 10 to the three minus one. So, well, what does it look like? Well, it looks like this should be equal to n times 45 times 10 to the n minus one. So maybe we'll make this our claim. And then perhaps on the next board, we'll start proving that claim by induction. Okay, so jumping into our proof by induction of our claim that a sub n is equal to n times 45 times 10 to the n minus one. Well, we need to obviously start with a base case, but the base case is done by all of the exploration on the last board. So now we simply need to make an induction hypothesis. And in this case, it'll be a strong induction hypothesis. So that means for all R between one and M, we'll assume that A sub R is equal to R times 45 times 10 to the R minus one. And then we'll consider the next case, the unproven case, which is the M plus first case. So let's do that. We have A sub M plus one. So by definition, that's the sum as k goes from zero up to 10 to the m plus one minus one of s of k. But now I'm gonna break this into 10 parts, just as we broke our a sub two and our a sub three pieces into 10 parts as well. And it's gonna look like this. So we're gonna have the sum as k goes from zero to nine. So those are our 10 parts. And then inside of that, we'll have the sum as j goes from k times 10 to the m all the way up to k plus 1 times 10 to the m minus 1. So this is like going from 0 to 9, 
10 to 19, 20 to 29, and so on and so forth in that A sub 2 case. Okay, so now, uh, oh, I forgot this. I've got my S sub J here. Now, next up, what I'd like to do is re-index that inner sum so that it starts at zero. So let's do that. So my outer sum is staying the same. My sum is K goes from zero to nine. And then if I re-index so it starts at zero, I'll have J going from zero up to, let's see, that's in fact gonna be equal to 10 to the M minus one. So you can check that pretty easily just by the difference of those two maybe indices, the upper and lower bound. And then we'll have S of J plus K times 10 to the M. But now let's observe that we can take this S of J plus K times 10 to the M and rewrite it as follows. So this is gonna be equal to K plus S of J. And well, why is that? Well, that's because this K is the leftmost term. Yeah, the leftmost term in the, you know, expansion of the number. But then the J is playing the role of all of the rest of the terms. So those are independent of each other. And now, well, we can sum this inner bit. So observe, well, we still have this sum as K goes from zero to nine. And then summing k from j equals 0 to 10 to the m minus 1, that's just summing a constant for how many terms? Well, 10 to the m terms. So that's going to give us k times 10 to the m. So that's from the k term. And then summing s of j from j from 0 to 10 to the m minus 1, that's our induction hypothesis. So that's going to, in fact, be equal to m times 40 five times 10 to the M minus one. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. And I think, you know, looking at this a little bit more carefully, maybe we didn't need a strong induction hypothesis. That being said, it's okay to write one down. Okay, so now, well, observe that this is simply 10 to the M times a triangular number, this sum of zero up to nine, that's this first term. But we already know that that's 45, so here we get 45 times 10 to the m. And so we're adding this term to itself 10 times, but that'll just give us 10 times that term, which will bump that m minus 1 exponent up to an m exponent. So here we have m times 45 times 10 to the m. But now, oh, well, we can add those together and we'll get m plus 1 times 45 times 10 to the m. But that's exactly the shape that we need in order, well, for the proof of that claim to be done. Okay, so now let's apply this claim to finish everything off. Okay, so we just finished off the closed form for our sequence a sub n. And now let's observe that in the language of a sub n, we know our capital N is a sub 2004 minus a sub 2003. So now putting in the value that we proved via that claim, we know that this is gonna be 2004 times 45 times 10 to the 2003, and then minus 2003 times 45 times 10 to the 2002. So let's take out a greatest common factor, which in this case is gonna be 45 times 10 to the 2002, and that's gonna leave us with 2004 times 10. In other words, 2004, well, sorry, 20,040 minus 2003. Now, of course, this is a simple arithmetic problem right here. We can subtract those two numbers and we'll get 18,037. And then multiply that into 45 and we'll get, 811,665. So we have our number n is, well, that 811,665 times 10 to the 2002. But the multiplication by 2010 to the 2002 
doesn't change the digit sum. So in fact, S of N is simply S of this 811,665. But of course, that's simply going to be 8 plus 1 plus 1, which is 10, plus 6 plus 6 plus 5, but 6 plus 6 plus 5 is 17. 10 plus 17 is 27. And well, that's our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.